This is Jameson with Cooper Fleet Services. Today is May 13th, 2022, and this is Recent Automotive News. GM will be adding a new ultra high-end trim level to their GMC Yukon and Sierra pickup lineups. This will be called the Denali Ultimate Trim. This trim level will include GM's new Super Cruise technology. This driver assist cruise control system is capable of basically hands-free driving on the highway and even can change lanes automatically to pass other vehicles. The Denali Ultimate will will sport a standard 6.2 liter V8 engine and an available Duramax 3 liter diesel. This announcement seems to come at a weird time as the microchip shortage and supply chain issues are still front and center in the automotive manufacturing industry. But unlike the light duty market, the ultra luxury and exotic vehicle markets are booming. With the average cost of vehicle purchases rising like never before, it seems as though GM is looking to cash in on the trend. They have announced the Denali Ultimate Sierra pickup will start at $80,395, which is a little less than $20,000 more than the standard Denali package. They have not announced the pricing of the Denali Ultimate for the Yukon yet. I would suspect it to start close to the $100,000 mark and have several options that will be able to take it over the $100,000 mark very easily. What happens when an 80,000 pound autonomously controlled semi-truck has a major problem? This is one of the huge questions left for the autonomous big rigs. As large manufacturers are promising automated big rigs by as soon as next year, the push for further safety features seems to be the largest outcry from the public that are expected to share the roadways with these robots. Recently, a Kodiak Robotics big rig safely pulled off of Interstate 45 and onto the shoulder of the highway. The company is touting this as a great success and they demonstrated the feature by cutting a cable needed for the truck to connect to the internet. After the connection was severed, the Class 8 truck safely and slowly pulled over to the side of the highway, avoiding all obstacles. Carvana reportedly laid off around 2,500 employees this Tuesday. Those employees took to messaging boards to air their grievances with the company and the CEO, Ernie Garcia. Many have stated they received little to no heads up about the layoffs. A leaked email from the CEO that went to the staff on Tuesday morning stated, quote, the impact of these forces on our industry has been severe. All-time high car prices are slowing sales to recession levels. We have managed to grow despite sales being down industry-wide, but we have grown a lot less than we planned for. He also stated, quote, Our team is bigger than we need and we can't be certain growth will rebound quickly enough to bring us back to balance. Carvana's stock price, which was trading in 2021 for over $300, is now down to $50 or less per share. This layoff represents a little over 10% of all Carvana's employees. Mercedes is recalling over 290,000 vehicles and it's issuing a stop drive notice for ML, GL, and R-Class vehicles, including some diesel and hybrid electric models, ranging from 2006 to 2012. This recall states that a defect may reduce brake function or cause complete brake failure. This is pretty scary stuff, and if you own one of these vehicles, make sure you get it checked out by a dealership right away. The new labor union in Mexico just struck a new deal for GM employees at the Salau plant. This deal is reportedly for raises that are above inflation. The agreement comes behind some very interesting details that we have previously covered on recent automotive news. Check out these clips, the first from June of 2021 and the second from August of 2021. GM workers in Salau, Mexico are looking to replace their union due in part to claims of lax COVID protocols. In interviews with Bloomberg, five GM workers in Mexico disclosed the conditions at the plant. Their stories range from an employee getting COVID and being forced back to work quickly without being tested, to workstations that were not socially distanced even after two employees on the team died from the virus. GM's Mexico office says that it has followed the recommendations from the Mexican authorities and the CDC. A little over a month ago, Mexico's federal labor, labor ministry required the union hold a new vote to ratify the collective bargaining agreement after the ministry found serious irregularities in the vote. 
This vote was held in April, and these irregularities include destruction of some ballots and, unions and the union's refusal to hand over the vote count to independent auditors. Several weeks ago, I reported on a GM union vote in Salao, Mexico that was required by the Mexican government to cast a re-vote due to some very shady circumstances around missing ballots and a lack of third-party oversight. This vote was to keep or change the current collective bargaining agreement or to have it scrapped. Now that the votes have been cast with a system of checks and balances, it turns out that the union members would like to scrap their current collective bargaining agreement, the opposite of the shady vote held earlier. As you can see, this plant seems to have been dealing with tough work conditions and some corruption in their union, and in my opinion, are well deserving of a raise. That's been it for automotive news this week. If you like content like this, check out our website at www.cooperfleetservices.com. A like and a subscribe really helps us out, really appreciate it. If you have any comments, please leave them down in the comments section. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a great weekend. Thanks.